Know before whom you stand. The letters are big, bold, highly contrasted with the wall without any embellishment to distract the mind. Even after all of these years, my eyes continue to be drawn to the inscription above the bima every time I enter the sanctuary. For years I pondered the meaning of the statement as well as the location and the striking boldness of the letters themselves. The simple and very true answer is that we are standing before Hashem. Therefore, Shul is a makom kadosh, a holy place, that needs to be respected and loved. Growing up in this shul, I continued to silently challenge myself with that answer. However, I could come up with no other answer or explanation for why the shul is a makom kadosh that could supersede the obvious. Over the last several years, my understanding and love for the shul has grown and matured. That is why I was honored, by, honored when Rabbi Kamras approached me a few weeks ago asking if I would speak along with my ima what a shul meant to me and why I felt our shul is so important. Today I'm here with my parents, my sister Carmel and her husband Ben, my beautiful wife Karen, and my two wonderful boys, Sam and Elon. I've been part of this shul along with my parents and sisters since its congregation Beth Kodesh days in the late 1980s. We were active in shul life, regularly attending Shabbat and holiday services, participating in youth events, learning Torah, tutoring B'nai Mitzvot, and making lifelong friends. However, no matter how much shul was a part of my life while growing up, I do not think I truly understood why shul was so important to me until much later. To tell you why, Shul is such an integral part of my life. I think it will be easiest to share parents in my journey over the last eight years. We recently moved back to the area and this June moved into our new house, which is a stone's throw away from Shomrei Toha, a cross valley circle right behind me here. It is no accident that we bought a house so close to Shomrei. Karen and I have been married for eight years and we have had an impressive six different addresses, all being major moves. Jewish life in shul has, have always been very important to Karen and myself. The location of our homes for the last four addresses have specifically revolved around which shul we've become part of. If you don't believe me, just ask Karen the countless hours we spent in driving ourselves crazy on Zillow and Google Maps, drawing circles and other polygonal shapes around shuls to ensure we wouldn't be looking and wasting our time for homes in the wrong area. This obsession with calculating the distance and the difficulty getting to shul in the sweltering heat, freezing cold, rain, sleet, or snow, with and without kids, began in January 2011 in Columbus, Ohio. We were in the middle of our intern year. Karen was in Dayton, and I was in Columbus. Karen applied and was accepted to transfer to Nationwide Children's in Columbus, Ohio, after our intern year. So we started to look for a house. Prior to Karen's transfer, we both lived in separate apartments close to each respective hospital. There were no shuls nearby. For six months, I did not attend a single Shabbat service or even step foot in a shul. I was busy working 100 plus hours a week. If I was not on call on Shabbat, I slept. Unknown to me at the time, I was suffering. My soul was suffering. For the first time in my life, I was not intimately part of a shul, a Hillel, or a Chabad. I had an insatiable hunger an emptiness that could not be filled with food, sleep, entertainment, or leisure. As soon as Karen was accepted to transfer and we began looking for our house, we knew we had to find a shul. We ended up buying a house in Bexley where we were walking distance to six shuls or even seven on a good day. We began to shul hop and at the end decided to join Torah Demet with Rabbi Howard Zach. My hunger and emptiness quickly dissipated as I was physically and spiritually centered by the shul. Every Shabbat that Karen and I were not on call, we looked forward to going to shul with much anticipation. It provided us sustenance for the hard week to come. It was during those next five years at Torah Temet when I truly began to understand what a shul is and why it was so important to me. The shul is a makom kadosh, a holy place. It provides the intangible and tangible. The shul sustains us, the congregants, for providing a place to daven or pray, connect with Hashem, learn and study, discuss, support Israel, eat, gather, build a community, form friendships, and become Am Yisrael. This is what I learned only after losing what I took for granted for so many years. It is this understanding and love for a shul 
that we pray to pass on to our children, Sam and Ilan. Nothing makes us happier when they ask with excitement on Shabbat morning if it is a shul day. Now that Karen and I have moved back to Los Angeles, we bring our love and understanding what a shul is to us to Shomre. I walk in through the same doors I have for so many years prior with a deeper understanding, love, and appreciation for the shul. Even after all these years, my eyes continue to be drawn to the inscription above the bima. Know before whom you stand. Today, Yom Kippur, I have no need to argue the meaning. Today we stand before Hashem, just as Chazan Snow will chant Unetane Tokef in Musa. However, on all other days, I now believe there is an additional answer. There is a Hasidic story that goes as follow, follows. Where is the dwelling of God? This was the question with which the Rabbi of Kotz surprised a number of learned Hasidim who happened to be visiting him. They laughed at him. What a thing to ask. Is not the whole world filled with God's glory? Then he answered his own question. God dwells wherever a person lets God in. By letting God in, we make the shul a makom kadosh, a holy place. Who are we standing before? We are standing before ourselves. We are standing before each other. We are standing before all of our children and our children's children to come. It is our responsibility to make sure Shomrei Torah Synagogue continues to provide the intangible and tangible sustenance that makes this a Makom Kodosh today, tomorrow, next year, and for generations to come. The shul is a living and growing institution that requires us to sustain it as it sustains us. The reality? Annual membership dues only covers 30% of the operating costs of the shul. The amazing services and programs of the shul that the shul provides are only possible by the generous donations. And there is no question that a shul cannot exist in today's world without financial support. However, it needs more than just money. The shul needs you. Join Karen and me today in making two commitments to Shomrei Torah Synagogue. One commitment to financially support the shul, and the second commitment to participate in one more aspect of shul life. Whether that is committing to attending Shabbat services, family services, or daily minyan, attending educational classes, joining the sisterhood or men's club, joining USY, forming a chavarah, reading Torah and or haftorah, attending guest lectures, or any part of shul that you can enrich either by your presence or leadership. Today's world is a demanding one. Cost of living continues to increase, and our daily lives have only become busier. But remember, da lifne miata omed. We are standing before each other and all future generations. If each one of us can make these two commitments, we can help sustain and ensure Shomrei Torah Synagogue's future as a makom kadosh. At this time, please find your tickets. There are tabs on your tickets to help support the shul. Whatever you may be able to contribute will be most appreciated and help this shul. Stay makom kadosh. Gemach Hatimatova. May we be sealed in the book of life.